Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So I am here checking out the electric EZ3 HD. It's a really cool recumbent trike in the Delta fashion. So that's one wheel in the front and two wheels in the back. It has some pretty cool things to it. It can carry a lot, a lot of load. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so I'm here with my man, Alec, from Electric Bike Technologies. Hey, everyone. He's gonna be helping us out with some of the specs and kind of who gets this bike. So so tell me, Alec, uh, who's this made for? Yeah, we what we love about this trike is it's really great for anyone on the heavier side, um, especially if you haven't ridden a bike in a long time, you're looking for a trike, something more stable. Uh, this trike has a weight limit of up to 400 pounds. Uh, it's very comfortable. It has this big padded seat, 21 gears, a mid-frame suspension to kind of smooth out the bumps, extra strong 48 spoke rear wheels and a heavy duty direct drive front motor that has no internal moving parts. So everything on the bike is optimized to be durable, comfortable and simple, but also high tech. Awesome. So yeah, that's a good point that I forgot to mention in the intro is that this can, well, it can carry a heavy load for a heavier rider that's trying to get out at all. I mean, I haven't seen the vehicle outside of a cargo bike. I mean, even some cargo bikes don't even get that high as far as a weight capacity, but this one can carry 400 pounds. So that's, that's quite a bit. So let's kind of go over it and show you how it accomplishes that. So one thing you'll notice right off the bat is that there's a lot of metal going on. Uh, so this frame is, of course, reinforced with a nice long steel bar here, you know, this cross section coming down, as well as the suspended um, section coming up front towards the front wheel. Uh, one of the coolest things about the frames is a lot of recumbents, you'll see they have like one boom tube running across the front, but this whole frame design is like a truss. We've got two tubes separated by a column in the middle all across the frame and even the back has multiple tubes connecting the rear axles which are cambered inwards in order to give you more stability when turning awesome so that's all part of the frame which itself is a chromoly steel so it can carry a lot of load but also it's not going to break the way that an aluminum frame would or especially carbon fiber it's going to like kind of slightly bend if there's just too much abrasion to it so let's go over some of the componentry. Uh, right up front, you actually do have a third brake. So this bike has three brakes on it. And of course I use the word bike just because I'm so accustomed to it, but this trike has three brakes. You have a V brake up front, which has a Pro Max with these little pads on it, just like the brakes that you've come to know and love uh, from your childhood. Uh, so this brake up here does a little bit of the stopping power, but most of it is coming from the back of the bike because the majority of the weight for this vehicle is in the back. The front, of course, is really long for a really good wheelbase, and we'll kind of talk about that when we get into the ride section. Uh, but yeah, for the brakes, you do have two disc brakes in the back of the bike, and those are Pro Max 300 disc brakes uh, that are cable actuated, which I like because they're really easy to work on. <laughs> they require a little more TLC than, say, hydraulic brakes, uh, but I actually like cable. They're fine. They're not too tough. Uh, so that's, of course, coming in the 160 millimeter rotors that you have in the back. Right in between the brakes, in the center of the back of the bike, you have the cassette, which is, you know, kind of suspended back here. You don't have anything connecting it on the other side. Uh, but this is an 11 to 34 uh, teeth count uh, for the rear cassette. And it's pretty cool because it's mounted right back in here. You can still access it through uh, this bolt right behind the whole thing. Uh, but it's kind of neat that it's down here. And this is, of course, with a SRAM X3 derailleur that you have hanging on the bottom of the bike. So coming back up to the front of the bike, you'll notice this tubing that kind of encloses the chain. This is really nice because the tubing kind of keeps your pants uh, nice and clean, but also it just cleans up the whole thing quite a bit because when you're mounting the bike, because your legs are kind of going right here in this position, there's a much higher likelihood that you're going to get uh, your legs caught up into this space. And when you dismount the bike, of course, your feet come off of the pedals and they go down to the ground. So you're kind of crossing that section again. So it's not as necessary for a traditional bike because the chain is behind you. But this is a really good thing, uh, nice and thought out. So the handlebars are quite unique. Um, the handlebars are underneath the seat mounted in what a, a position that kind of looks backwards. So it kind of gives you the idea of tank controls but they're not independent. Of course, these handlebars are, of course, connected together by one solid piece. So these are like a normal handlebar, so to speak, um, but they're just kind of mounted upside down and backwards a little bit, and they're pretty darn tall. And they do that so that you can actually get access to them because it's mounted underneath the rider. 
And so of course the right hand is here, the left hand is there. And they, okay, Alec, why don't you go ahead and jump on there and kind of show them yeah. what it looks like when you steer. Absolutely. So Alec's gonna jump on here and it's pretty natural. Yeah, you in, can see how like when I'm on this bike even, I'm almost, it's like I'm sitting in a chair. Um, it's a much different experience from an ordinary bicycle where you've got to climb on, sort of balance yourself. My legs are a really natural chair-like position and I'm just sitting on it and then I can stick my feet up in the pedals when I want to. Cool. And yeah, that's a good point. So here he is on with his feet on the pedals. And Alec, why don't you go ahead and spin a little bit? Yeah. So he's going to go backwards and not go terribly far, but... Uh, so yeah, as he said, he's in a very natural seating position. It's almost like sitting in an easy chair with your hands on the arms. Uh, but of course the arms articulate for steering. Uh, so it is a different than a normal bike because all of your controls are mounted in a position that feels upside down because your hands are upside down in comparison to a normal bike. Uh, so things like the brake lever here, instead of, you, it has a really long handle so you can actuate it with your entire hand. And that's a good thing. If they had a little tiny one, that might be difficult. You do have a grip shift uh, for both the front and the back and that's a, th a SRAM 3.0 grip shift. Uh, these are a little tough to get to, uh, especially because you have to use your two weakest fingers, your pinky and your ring finger, to grasp onto it to shift. The majority of your hand strength, of course, is with these fingers. And so those fingers, the strong ones, are kind of in the way a little bit or unutilized to switch this. So you need a little bit of strength. So if you do have arthritis or if you have some other considerations, it might be a little tough. You can kind of customize this if you'd like to from a local bike shop. This is how the bike comes the way it is. So that's one thing to look out for. You do have on the left hand side mounted by default this little guy for the screen. We'll kind of talk about that in the electric system when we get to it. Uh, coming over to the other side of the bike, um, also talking about the controls. The brake and the shifter of course is mirrored on the other side, but on the right hand side you do have the throttle which is mounted on the tippy top of the handlebar there. The throttle is cool because it's actually pretty easy to access. You can, if you want, put your palm on top of it and rotate your palm <laughs> to kind of engage the throttle, which is pretty cool. However, it doesn't, it's not entirely clean. You know, the, you have the cable kind of coming down here. It's not like gonna hurt you or anything like that. It's not gonna get hot, but it's not a very clean look, but you have to make some kind of compromises when you're making a vehicle so unique as this. You know, they don't, this entire vehicle is something that has been put together using existing parts aside from perhaps the frame and a couple of nuts and bolts. Uh, so this is not a bad solution, but it certainly isn't optimal. It's really tough because you don't have a lot of real estate to work with. On a traditional bike, you have handlebars that are crossing over the person's body and you have a lot of space. But here, with you have the handlebars coming up, you don't have a lot of room to work with. So you can totally understand why they'd have to make that choice. Uh, so kind of moving up to the front, uh, this is uh, the suspension. I guess it's a mid suspension. <laughs> yeah, we call this a mid frame suspension. And what it does is it soaks up the bumps. Say you drive over a pothole or that sort of thing, allows the front of the frame to articulate. And inside here is an elastomer, um, which is like a composite material. Uh, think of a, a rubber that's covered up in here that flexes and allows the front of the frame to pivot like this as you go over a bump. So it helps to smooth things out back here where you're seating on this big old squishy seat here. So that's cool. I guess it's it's kind of the opposite of a, a hardtail yeah, <laughs> in a way. Because exactly. you, you have a, a suspension. No, maybe it is a hardtail because you have a suspension in the front yeah. front of the bike. Yep and nothing in the back. Yeah, I guess it's, it's almost like a suspension fork, except it's in the frame, okay. I suppose. Um, so it, it would be a little bit like a hardtail in that sense, that the front is suspended, the back isn't. Um, but it's not, not the fork that's doing it, it's the frame that's pivoting right around the middle. And on this bike, it, it works uh, it, pretty well for what it does. Okay, so coming back up to some of the component selection. Uh, so in the bottom bracket here, which is, I guess you'd call it a front bracket. <laughs> in the bottom bracket area, you have this kind of universal spider system for the crank, which by the way is a 170 millimeter crank. Uh, these pedals have a metal on the outside with, of course, the reflectors. And a plastic bridge with a metal core that kind of goes into the crank itself. Uh, so on this crank, you do have, uh, by default, a 32, 42, and 52 uh, tooth count uh, for each one of these rings. And you do have a front derailleur, which works pretty good. I mean, they have a lot of space on this part of the frame to work with. 
Uh, so if you wanted to, you could totally get something bigger. You can kind of choke this up a little bit and get some extra space if you wanted to mount something to go a little bit faster. Uh, so you do have, uh, I guess what you'd call a normal headset up here. It just doesn't connect to handlebars. It just gets capped out. And that's coming into the front solid fork uh, into the direct drive motor. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and take the opportunity to jump into the electric system. So this is a 500 watt direct drive motor uh, way up in the front. And you might think that it interrupts the balance when you have a motor that's this far away from the rider. But with such a long wheelbase and such a unique vehicle, it actually works out pretty good. Uh, because you do have a fair amount of weight from this heavy direct drive up here. But that actually, that actually counterbalances, in a way, a lot of the weight that's in the back of the bike. Uh, particularly if you're a heavy rider. Okay, so one last thing about the mechanical system I forgot to mention was the tires. These are a 20 by 195, and they actually have a peculiar thing about them in which they're very high pressure. They have a pretty thick bead uh, on the tire itself, so you can actually get this thing from 85 to 110 PSI. And they do that, of course, to accommodate uh, the possibility of a very heavy rider on this yep. bike. So you need a pretty high pressure to avoid pinch flats, as exactly. Alec was telling me. So. Yeah, so continuing on with the electric system, uh, we kind of talked about the, uh, the direct drive motor here coming up to this waterproof plug, uh, which is nice. So if you need to get this off, of course, it's a heavier wheel, but you do have a nice easy connector right there. You can pop that off and then you're ready to rock if you need to change a tire. Oh, well, then again, you'll have to do the brakes, but that's pretty easy to pinch that, pull them out, and then you're ready to go. So coming up into the cabling up here, and this is pretty well tucked underneath uh, all the, the busyness of the frame. <laughs> you got a lot to work with there. Um, and then it comes up to this four to one cable uh, up to the front. And then this is where things kind of branch out. You have the cables coming up to the controls for the throttle, another set coming up here to the display and the remote switch. And then of course, coming down into the controller. So we talked about the throttle uh, when we did the controls. It's, it's a throttle as far as electric is concerned. Uh, you twist that and then off you go. And the throttle will override the pedal assist. So if you're pedaling in pedal assist mode, you can goose that throttle and it will kind of get you going. Uh, before we get too far, I did want to mention the pedal assist, which is a 12 magnet pedal assist sensor built into the bottom bracket here. Uh, so of course this works by pedaling as you pedal the bike forward. We'll kind of go backwards to give you an idea, but as you pedal the bike forward, there is a counter that's passing through these magnets and that's how the bike knows that you want some power. So as you pedal, it'll engage. Uh, and as you stop, it knows that this isn't passing. It knows you don't want assist. So it lets you coast from there on out. So again, continuing back, we'll talk about the display a little bit. So the display and the remote are both mounted on the left-hand side. When you press the M button here, that's what starts up the display. We'll kind of talk about the functions a little bit. So on this display, um, it gives you all the basics. It tells you your pedal assist level. Right now it's in level five, and Alec is gonna kind of turn it up or down to kind of show you how it articulates. Uh, you can change that mode with the press of a button. You don't need to stop the bike or anything like that. It just knows exactly what you're after when you press those buttons. Right in the middle, you have the speed in nice big letters, so you can read that. And on the bottom, you have a variable display for your odometer, average speed, max speed, trip set, and a couple other functions. If you press up and down at the same time, that will enter a settings menu. And the settings menu, um, i to talk about that a little bit. The, se the settings menu, you can actually configure quite a bit. Uh, so these guys at Electric Bike Technologies here in Pennsylvania, if you need some help, they can actually walk you through if you wanted to, say, change the wheel size or the top speed or the current limit or a handful of other metrics like that. You can actually do on the bike. You don't have to, like, send it in or get a, a dongle or anything like that. You can actually customize it a lot. So that's a really cool feature uh, from these guys here in Pennsylvania. So back on the display, uh, you do have your battery level that is displayed here on kind of like these little notches. Kind of looks like a ruler. So as you use the bike, these will go down in little sections to kind of illustrate how much battery life you have. And right now we see all of it so it's fully charged. The display is mounted onto this mount, which is a pretty cool little mount, you know, kind of pokes out from the side of the handlebar. Kind of like the throttle, you don't have a ton of space to work with for, um, for mounting, so it is a little bit out of the way. Uh, Alec, why don't you go ahead and sit down on there, so yeah. kind of get an idea for scale. Um, with Alec sitting down on here, you know, usually you got your eyes on the road, I hope, when you're riding a bike, and so it's a little bit further down. You notice that Alec's got to turn his head entirely to see where he's at as far as speed or battery life. So, you know, there is kind of a, there's kind of a trade-off there because 
if you have the display right where you want it, right where you see it, that's cool. But then again, you know, you're on a bike so you can enjoy the great outdoors and kind of get out and see things. So, you know, it's, it's give or take, you know, it just depends on what you're after. So. <clears throat> okay, and one last thing I did want to mention about the electric system was the controller and the battery. So the controller is an air-cooled controller that's mounted underneath the frame there. Uh, despite that it's underneath everything, it's actually not too tough to get to in comparison with a lot of other bikes. And if you did want to customize that or if you wanted to change it out, again, the guys over at Electric Bike Technologies can help you out with that. Easy stuff. Um, the battery is mounted on this kind of like diagonal sort of plate that's kind of pointing down. And this is a, an addition, a change, that they did from the previous model year. So in the previous years, they had it mounted up here, and that did kind of like change the weight quite a bit. And, you know, the metal bracing for this seat, you know, it might not be the most ideal place. So they decided to move it down here to this position. It does lower the weight of the vehicle, makes it a little bit easier to control. But it does come at the cost that now it's kind of slanted a little bit. It is locked into position, so let's go ahead and pull it out. This plug is pretty simple. That pops right off, nothing to worry about there. So Alec is gonna go ahead and turn the key, and that's going to remove a retention pin that keeps the battery onto a plate. And then he's gonna go ahead and pull it out there, and you'll see that it kind of slides down on this diagonal sort of uh, rail that it mounts onto. Uh, so it's locked in there, and this is, again, the little space where the pin goes and the pin is on the bottom of the battery. So it is secured, uh, despite the fact that it's tilted. Uh, so yeah, that's one thing about the battery mounting that's kind of different. Uh, so this bike does come with, by default, it comes with a 48 volt, nine amp hour battery that is in a bag. This particular one is the upgraded one, it's a 48 volt, 10 amp hour. So it's a tiny bit bigger as far as capacity, but it's in a nice locking metal case. You know, which is pretty cool. You can lock it on the bike and it's stuck there. Um, or you could, if you want to go even higher, get a 48 volt 20 amp hour, but likewise that one is in a bag as well. So one last thing that I forgot to cover was the seat. Uh, so this is kind of an interesting seat because it uses the mesh uh, for the backing. So the rails are on the side and the rider's body goes back into the mesh. So it's actually not making contact with any of the metal. And it has a lot of bracing in the back to kind of keep it up. The bottom doesn't use a mesh, but the bottom uses, I guess, what we call more traditional bike seat as far as design goes, but it's pretty darn wide. It has this horn up in the front, and this can move on a couple of pins that are down here uh, beneath the seat. Yeah, quick release lever like a normal bike. We open two levers here, and then the entire seat will slide forward and backward just that quickly. And if you want to uh, dial in your leg length for the bike, slide it forward and backward, and then lock the two levers again, and then the seats stay in put. Okay, cool. So yeah, it actually has a little more uh, customization than I thought. I thought it was on pins, yeah. but it actually can move up and down the rail uh, with those quick releases. And of course you saw that the back of the bike, or the back of the seat kind of moves with it to adjust in, on that slider. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's the electric EZ3 HD. Let's go ahead and jump on the bike and take it for a ride. Pick up the pace a little bit. So here we go on the EZ3 HD. It's actually a lot of fun. <laughs> the steering is very unique, you know, very unique. It does kind of cross over your body, you know, a little bit. When you make a tight turn, you got to kind of move your hands and kind of, you know, kind of move it all the way over to the point where it kind of gets pretty close to your hips uh, when you're making that turn. And right now I'm operating it, of course, with one hand and my other hand is holding the camera. So it's a little, uh, it's a little challenging, you know, I mean, a lot of bikes are, um, you know, or a lot of trikes and things with unique controls are tough to do with one hand because they assume that people don't ride it holding a camera. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it actually makes for some pretty interesting turns because it has a long, like I kind of mentioned, it has that long wheelbase and yeah, it's, it turns still pretty good. I think that long wheelbase, I mean, it makes it tougher to maneuver if you are in like a garage or if you're 
for some reason using this thing indoors um, in tight quarters but you know it really makes a big difference when you're going faster on a more open road and this of course is an open road that we're on here this nice little track um, but this is not anything unlike what you'll probably encounter when you're biking uh, so let's go ahead and switch over here see if I can show you a little bit more of the bike in action I'll go ahead and show you the uh, the front end that's kind of where the action is so Now I'll show you a little bit of the back end. Let's go ahead and switch gears a little bit. Kind of change things around. All right. All right, here we go. Okay guys, so here we are on the EZ3 HD. I've got you pointed at the pedals, the front chain ring, and of course the motor. So let's go ahead and give it a spin. Actually, you know what? I was quite surprised. I thought that the tightness of the steering, especially on the far end of the spectrum, when you start to get the wheel turned all the way that way, I thought that would be really tough, um, but it did pretty good. I think the really long wheelbase helps out a lot. You can actually turn pretty comfortably, say somewhere around 13 miles an hour or so. Uh, past that point, you gotta start like you know, slowing down, kind of shift your weight a little bit to match it, but it did a lot better, a lot better than I thought. I was kind of worried about that, but I think that this kind of bent steering linkage and the long wheelbase, having some weight up front with this motor really helps out a lot. So it rides pretty well. Okay guys, thanks for checking out the EZ3 HD with me. It's actually really fun. I like the longer wheelbase. I'm excited to try out some other trikes too. If you want to check out this trike, you can see the full write-up with all the measurements and the specifications on electricbikereview.com. You can go there and compare this with other trikes from the same guys here in Pennsylvania from Electric Bike Technologies. I'm actually, re actually reviewing a lot of trikes from them. So yeah, uh, you can check that out as well. You can participate in the forums if you'd like. You can ask a question, kind of hang out with the community and interact with us there. So thanks for watching, guys. Ride safe.